Hey everybody, uh, Ralph from Immortality here. I hope you're having an amazing day. Uh, I'm excited and I'm especially excited today because I am leaving this weekend for uh, two weeks in Thailand to catch up with some of my team members and visit some of our farmers. And for the first time on any of my trips to Thailand, I'm taking my family with me. So uh, we're excited about that. Uh, not so excited about a long plane ride with a, two to uh, with a baby and a toddler. Um, but definitely excited about having my family with me there. I will be back in touch with you guys uh, from Thailand for sure. But before I leave, two um, research papers crossed my desk uh, this morning that I wanted to make sure I shared with you before I get on the plane and forget about it uh, with the rush of all the activities that will be going on there. So um, let me just jump straight to those two articles. The first one, which uh, you see on the screen here now, is uh, from the journal Nutrients, uh, and it was published this week, and it's about the acute effects of hibiscus on uh, flowers, calcis means uh, flowers, on postprandial blood pressure, vascular function, blood lipids, biomarkers of insulin resistance and inflammation in humans. Um, long title, but basically uh, what they did is there are lots of articles and clinical studies on the effects of hibiscus tea for blood pressure from a chronic perspective. Uh, meaning if you drink the stuff regularly, you know, what is the, uh, the effect on your blood pressure? And the studies do indicate that it has a positive effect on blood pressure uh, from a chronic perspective. But these researchers wanted to know something uh, interesting that hadn't been researched before, which is as soon as you drink it, it doesn't have an immediate effect on your blood pressure. And um, they did that by doing something called flow-mediated dilation. Um, and they wanted to study, you know, how how large are the blood vessels as, um, you know, you drink the hibiscus tea or shortly after drinking hibiscus tea. And the results of that study are fascinating because what they found is that um, four hours after drinking a just a regular cup of hibiscus tea prepared using sort of the standard way that it's done in most of the world, that there was a significant improvement in your uh, dilation of the um, bronchial artery. So um, I will put the link to that article uh, in below this video so that you can check it out. And uh, if you're getting my, if you're on my email list, you'll get the, the link in the email as well. Um, but I thought that was an interesting article. The first time I've seen somebody studying a, um, the acute effects of hibiscus. So it's not just that it benefits from a chronic perspective, but there's an immediate um, benefit to your blood pressure by drinking a cup of hibiscus tea um, for uh, as measured at least four hours after um, consuming it. So that's pretty cool. And that sort of explains in my mind, at least um, theoretically, why hibiscus is also known to improve uh, headaches. So, you know, if you're dehydrated, your blood thickens. Um, as your blood thickens, your blood pressure goes up and that increase in blood pressure causes a headache. Um, you come in out of the sun, you drink a cup of hibiscus tea or, um, a, you know, a cold cup of hibiscus, which is, which is more common in, uh, in the tropics. Uh, not only are you uh, hydrating, so that'll have the hydration effect of lowering the, the viscosity of the blood, but you're also dilating blood vessels immediately. So your blood pressure drops as a result of both of those effects and um, the headache goes away. So that's pretty cool. And I've experienced that myself uh, in traveling in Egypt, uh, doing hibiscus, drinking hibiscus tea and, and immediately having my, uh, my headache go away. So um, that sort of explains that. And I think that's cool to check out. I uh, have put a uh, coupon code for our hibiscus tea on Amazon for you guys. And if you're on my email list, you'll see the uh, coupon code that you can use for the next week uh, for 20% off of our hibiscus on amazon.com. So uh, look for that if you're one of our email subscribers. If you're not, why not go sign up? Uh, the other study I wanted to study with you, or study with you, I wanted to share with you is, was published yesterday uh, in a journal uh, called Stroke, which is a publication of the American Heart Association. And it's on the effect of artificially sweetened beverages on your likelihood of stroke, coronary and heart disease for women. And this is a fascinating study as well. It took a look at postmenopausal women. So the study only applies to women um, in general over their 40s. Um, but they took a look at women who drink more than two artificially sweetened beverages per day um, so it wasn't long ago, a couple years ago, the American Heart Association came out with a recommendation um, that women who suffer from obesity might want to replace um, sweetened beverages, sugar sweetened beverages with artificially sweetened beverages as a way to moderate uh, weight, to improve weight loss. 
Um, but now they're taking a look at, you know, is that beneficial or is the benefit of weight loss offset by the fact that you are now drinking these um, artificially sweetened beverages? And previous studies have indicated that there may be a link to um, artificial sweetened beverages and heart disease. And this study was a demographic study. It looked at a huge um, population study called the Women's Health Initiative, which involves 81,000 some odd women over a significant period of time. And what they found is, I'm sorry, I said over 40, this study looked at, at women from age 50 to 79. And what they found, I'll just read the conclusion to you. It said that a higher intake of artificial, artificially sweetened beverages was associated with an increased risk of stroke, uh, and particularly of small artery occlusion subtype coronary heart disease and all cause mortality. So not only does it increase your risk of heart disease and stroke, but of death in general. And particularly, they wanted to point out the fact that um, for women who drank more than two artificially sweetened beverages a day on average, there was a twofold increase in the risk of small artery occlusion of ischemic stroke. So um, that's a huge uh, increase in uh, your risk of stroke by eating artificial beverages. So yes, cut the sweetened beverages out of your diet, but don't replace them with artificially sweetened versions of the same things. Just replace them with water or tea um, or coffee without sugar. Those are the best ways to go uh, for that. And this study uh, proves that um, pretty conclusively. There is a question about the causality, by the way. So this is interesting. So the, the people who did the study did, um, you know, variability analysis, statistical analysis to eliminate um, things like, you know, are the people who uh, drink artificially sweetened beverages, you know, way more or they're obese or they have diabetes. So they, they did statistical analysis to eliminate those variables. What they can't do is establish causality. So, um, and this happens a lot in demographic studies. So you find something that is clearly strongly associated with an effect. So in this case, artificially sweetened beverages are clearly strongly associated with a higher rate of cardiovascular death and stroke and uh, a higher uh, total cause mortality rate among women in this group. What we don't know is, did the artificially sweetened beverages cause that, or is it the fact that women who are at a higher risk for these things tend to drink artificially sweetened beverages for some reason we don't understand. So we can't understand, we can't establish definitively which way the causality uh, works. It makes a lot of sense to me that the causality is more likely um, that the artificially sweetened beverages are somehow increasing your risk of those uh, illnesses. But I just wanted to make that uh, quick uh, caveat that we don't know for sure what the causality is and, you know, for the research that requires to set that up. Uh, but those two studies, I think, are fascinating. Uh, I hope you found those interesting as well. Again, I'll share the links. Both of those uh, studies are available in full for free, so you can read them for yourself uh, without having to pay anything. So, uh, you know, do check those things out or check those studies out. I hope you enjoyed um, the, this video and uh, I will sign off for now and go pack my bags. And next time you hear from me, you'll be, uh, I'll be uh, writing to you or uh, maybe doing a video for you from uh, Thailand. See you again soon. Take care. Bye.